Well, I want to welcome you to this edition with Lunch with Pastor Bill. Uh, my sister Martha lives out in California, and she calls it breakfast with her brother. But she's three hours behind, so she uh, watches it a lot earlier uh, than, uh, than we would. But uh, we welcome all of you. Thank you for watching today, and thank you for um, being a part of uh, these devotions. Enjoy doing them and glad to do them. What I want to talk about today is to look at, uh, again, the post-resurrection appearances of Christ. And I think one of the most important passages, all of them are important, but one of the clearest passages that we have about the resurrection and the post-resurrection appearances is actually written by the Apostle Paul. In 1 Corinthians 15, uh, he's giving this uh, defense of the gospel and, and a defense of the resurrection and the reason is because he reminds us that the evidence and the proof of our resurrection is the fact that Christ was raised from the dead. And the whole point is that Christ, if Christ wasn't raised, well, neither will we be raised. I mean, it's, uh, it's all a, a futile effort in religion if Christ really wasn't raised from the dead. And so here's what he says. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 3. He says, For I passed on to you... As most important, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, uh, Simon Peter, and then he appeared to the twelve, and then he appeared to over 500 brothers at one time. Most of them are still alive, but some have fallen asleep. And then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one abnormally born, he also appeared to me. Now, uh, the point of what Paul is making here, he's not giving um, a defense of every single appearance of Christ. He wasn't listing every single uh, post-resurrection appearance, but he was showing how Jesus appeared to very uh, a, a very diverse group of people and a very important group of people. He appeared to, uh, to Simon Peter, and tomorrow I'm going to talk... Uh, more about the specific appearance he had with Simon Peter. Uh, he appeared to uh, the apostles. He appeared to the apostle Paul later. Uh, and then he says he appears to over 500 brothers. Now, the importance of that is not just uh, the, the number of people that he appeared to, but the fact that he said that most of them are still alive. Now, if you want to perpetuate a lie, you don't want people to know who the witnesses might be who could say, no, this is a lie. We didn't see Jesus. This didn't happen. But the fact is, here are all of these individuals who are alive who say they saw the Savior. And Paul says, if you want to know if the resurrection is true, I'll give you the names and addresses and phone numbers and email addresses. You go see these guys and talk to them and ask them, and they'll let you know. It's not just the apostles claiming that Jesus was alive. I mean, you could understand that if they were trying to perpetuate a lie, that they might even be willing to die for that lie because uh, it's, it's them perpetuating the lie. But the fact is, these are all the other people that, that had seen Christ and can testify that Jesus really was raised from the dead. In addition to that, uh, you have the testimony of, uh, of Matthew where he talks about how the leaders of the Jews had uh, gone to uh, the Pilate and, and to, the, to the Roman officials to ask for um, a guard to be placed in front of the tomb. And the interesting thing is now there's some debate was it did when when Pilate said, "Well, you have a guard?" Did he mean you have a, a temple guard, or did he actually provide a Roman guard? Well, I believe it was a Roman guard, and one of the reasons is because once the resurrection had happened, the guards ran to the to the chief priest, told him what had happened, and they and they made a deal with him. They bribed him with money and said, "If anybody asks you about this, just tell them that the disciples came and stole the body of Jesus." And if the governor asks, we will defend you in front of the governor. Now, the governor would not care. If it was a Jewish guard, he wouldn't have cared if uh, the body had been stolen or if the resurrection had happened. He wouldn't have cared about that. But if it was a Roman guard, they were subject to him, and they were actually subject to death if 
uh, the body had been stolen. That's why they were protected. That's why the, the, the they were there to protect it. That's why the uh, the tomb was sealed, was so that it would say this is something official and no one is allowed uh, to steal this body. So the fact that the elders were willing to bribe them, and remember, Matthew is writing primarily, his, his audience is primarily Jewish, and so he's giving this defense of the gospel to the Jews. And so he tells this story to remind them that the Jewish leaders were trying to say that the resurrection didn't happen. But here are all these other people. Here's everybody you can talk to to show that the resurrection is true. Now, here, here's what it says to us. Paul writes, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, to remind us that just as Jesus was raised, was raised from the dead, so will you and I be raised. Uh, what we have or don't have in this life is irrelevant in the sense because of what we're going to have in eternity and what Christ is going to provide for us in eternity. And so all of the things that we go through and the difficulties that we have, remember that God's not forgotten about you. The, the gospel's not over. The story doesn't end at this point. Uh, Christ was raised from the dead, and it's not like, well, he was raised from the dead. Well, that's it. The story's done. No, the story continues because we understand that because Christ was raised from the dead, that he is alive, he sits at the right hand of God, and one day he's coming back to get us. And that's good news. And at that point, in our, uh, when he comes to get us, the dead in Christ are going to rise. We're all going to receive a resurrected body, a new body, a glorified body, just like Christ is glorified. And in that, then we will spend eternity with each other, with God, with Christ in heaven. And so the encouragement of that is don't be discouraged by the things that you face today, by the things that go on today. All of these things are temporary. What God has for us is the eternal. Be blessed today. Enjoy your lunch. Have a good day.